On this episode of Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites, we have Chef Jason from Constant Coffee and Tea, and he's gonna be making a cream of red pepper soup with black beans and cream sauce. Stick around and find out how it's done. Welcome to Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Hey, welcome to another episode of Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. I'm your host, John Scanlon, and I'm joined by a very special guest in the kitchen today. We have Chef Jason from Constant Coffee and Tea. Hello. Jason, thanks for so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. You guys have two locations. You got your uh, second location open already? Yes, we are uh, uh, open in our second location. With uh, We're still quasi in soft opening. We're knocking out a couple of details, mm -hmm. but uh, we are open uh, every morning from 8 a.m. until 3 o'clock in the afternoon for breakfast and lunch. And that's on 11C uh, Palafox Place, which is in the Blunt Building. That was just completely remodeled and looks gorgeous and you are in the breezeway. Yes, we are in the breezeway. Uh, at the back of the breezeway, um, if you're entering from uh, Palafox, we would be all the way at the end towards the parking lot. So you, you, you serve customers down there. You also are on Scenic Highway, right there where Scenic Highway turns into Cervantes. Yes, we are there. Um, and that shop is open from six in the morning until six o'clock in the afternoon with the exception of Saturday which uh, we are open at eight o'clock there mm -hmm. as well. Now, and your menu is mostly based at the uh, Palafox location, is that correct? But you also serve food at... Uh, yes, uh, our heavier menu is downtown. Uh, however, we do a selection uh, at the uh, East Pensacola Heights location. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is actually one of the dishes we're doing today is on the menu at the East Pensacola Heights location in the exact way that we're going to be doing oh, excellent. it. Oh, excellent. So, uh, we, uh, and the, uh, the soup that we're about to do now was a special yesterday oh, at nice. the downtown location. So it thought it'd be a, a nice chance to kind of showcase what we have and also to, uh, to give people an idea that uh, what I do doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So and this is going to be a great soup. You got a lot of fresh vegetables. Yep. Uh, I know we were talking about it. You know, you, you, you try to design this on a budget, right? I did, yes, a little bit. I uh, tried to, uh, uh, I believe what I said to you is I tried to shop the way that my mother used to when I was <laughs> growing up. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be expensive. Uh, this stuff can come out of a garden if you're an avid gardener. Mm -hmm. There's really not much in here that isn't uh, fresh vegetables. Uh, there's a few things, you know, uh, our dairy, and we're going to use canned beans because it's a little bit faster that way. Mm -hmm. And in a soup, are you really going to know? Absolutely. You know, so uh, there is that. But uh, we're going to start off just going to take the stickers off of them and uh, go and just pull all the seeds out. Take these, uh, this white bit can be rather bitter. I think most people uh, are fairly aware of that from the Food Network at this point, but uh, <laughs> just get all that stuff out. Uh, I'm not gonna care very much about how this stuff gets chopped up because it's all gonna go into a blender. Mm. Uh, and the blender will do the work for me, you know, technology. Absolutely. <laughs> Try to engage with technology, it's 2020. <laughs> That blender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get me started on the coffee maker. Uh, <laughs> and so you guys do serve food at both locations, uh, but you also have a, a wonderful assortment of you know, different coffees, different teas, uh, and both locations are. You know, the atmosphere is pretty incredible. I, I go down to. Yeah, I actually have sat at both your locations, and you know, just kind of you know, take a minute to you know reflect or do one, catch my breath. You know, have a like right now I'm kind of hooked on your New Orleans nectar, the coffee, which is just uh, fantastic. That is uh, one of my favorite syrups that we make. Uh, and uh, I 100% stole it. <laughs> there is uh, literally, uh, it was uh, taken from the now defunct k and Pharmacy in uh, New Orleans. And uh, it is wonderful. They use it to make uh, anybody who's a, a, a real New Orleans, uh, New Orleans, I guess is what they call that, uh, knows the, uh, the snow cones, nectar snow cones are what that syrup was originally used for. And, uh, and it's got, I think it has honey in it and, uh, or is that, uh, that's, um, that's going to be our, uh, bees knees, our bees knees. Syrup. That's another one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That is, uh, I, people come in and they ask me, uh, what should I get? Uh, when they look at that menu and I say, well, uh, this is my favorite, which is the Cafe Provencial, which is uh, a Cafe Americano espresso that's been diluted with hot water. 
and then we add orgette syrup and almond milk to it. And uh, that's my favorite. And then I have to tell them that while that is my favorite, I sell the honey vanilla bee's knees. Uh, I sell three of those for every other thing that I sell. <laughs> well, I think that's the thing, right? Like right now with our, our weather changing, I mean, it's February 7th while we're filming. And you know, it's 30 degrees last night, it's 70 degrees tomorrow. So we always have these allergies and, you know, the you know, sore throats. That bee's knees is incredible. You go down there and, you know, it, it, your throat feels better and you get a little pep in your step. Oh yeah, it's, uh, and there's a, there's a lot to, uh, you know, the old saying, you have a little bit of honey to, uh, to keep the cold and the allergies away. <laughs> yeah. Um, I find that if you just ingest enough caffeine, you don't care what you feel like anymore. <laughs> Says the owner of two <laughs> coffee shops. <laughs> I, uh, I had this uh, wonderful sort of apocryphal story. Um, because the, uh, the coffee shop business gets a lot of, of flack for being a little on the pretentious side. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know you may have heard that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I had a, a customer come in a number of years ago. We had just opened up uh, and I was working an enormous number of hours. And so uh, I have this person come in and they say, well, I, I want coffee, but I don't know what I want. And I said, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I have a number of different things. Let's figure out what you want. And so we went through, do you want hot? Do you want cold? Oh, I want hot. Okay, do you want a flavor? Do you want it sweet? Do you want it this? Do you want it that? Do you want the other thing? And uh, we went through the entire process. And he finally looks at me and says, uh, what are you drinking? And I looked at him and in a half asleep stupor said, uh, I am drinking lukewarm coffee out of a dirty cup. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, can I have that? <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> and then he said, but can I have a clean cup? <laughs> and it was just a wonderfully fun interaction that we had there. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's how pretentious coffee can get. <laughs> well, that is a large red pepper. That is a big one, yeah. I probably won't have to use the last one thanks to that guy. Now I do find that when I when I come to your restaurants, uh, to your shops, that it can be overwhelming seeing all those different options, uh, and that's what I always try to tell people when I when I talk about constant coffee and tea is you, you do kind of get overwhelmed. But every time I've ever been in and you know, I talk to you know whoever is at the uh, front desk or you know, hey, what's something good? And everybody always suggests something that I've had multiple different things. And every time it's been fantastic and it's all, everybody's friendly. So while you may have that pretentious kind of uh, stereotype for uh, coffee shops, that's not really the case. Everybody's super friendly, uh, really relaxed environment. Our baristas uh, are very much interested in getting rid of that idea that coffee is not for everybody. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, it's something that we look for in the hiring process. It's something that we, we very much try to, uh, I'm losing the word, um, we try to just sort of make sure everyone gets a feeling for uh, when they're working with us is that this really is for everyone. Coffee is the most widely consumed beverage on the planet after water. <laughs> uh, more people drink coffee than any other liquid mm -hmm. on planet Earth other than the water that one needs for life. For coffee. Yeah, and, co <laughs> well, yeah, and coffee, uh, which are the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so the, the idea that it's not going to be for everyone is just ridiculous. Uh, their entire cultures have risen and fallen on this one beverage and uh, is, uh, is wonderful as, uh, as that Bud Light might taste after work, I seriously doubt you could find a culture that has risen or maybe one that's fallen. Uh, <laughs> so we try to make sure that everyone is uh, well taken care of when they come in. So we're just gonna cut these up. You're, you're slicing them, you're gonna chop them a couple other ways. We're gonna throw them in the uh, pot. I'm gonna make them small enough to go in there without mm -hmm. annoying me. Okay. That's really the, uh, the main thing. And uh, as far as the, the number of them, it's, uh, I find that four or five uh, makes a, uh, a good quart of soup. 
Uh, if you want more, you can put more. Hmm. This is uh, just sort of what I found is, uh, is going to work well for me. All right, so we've cut up about five red peppers so far, and we got a couple more ingredients. What else do we have there that's going to go in this uh, soup? I have about a half a head of garlic. Uh, throw that in there. I've got half of a large red onion. I've got about a quarter cup of fresh parsley. I've got two jalapenos, because I like it hot. And then we're going to be using some dried uh, oregano, dried thyme. We've got a little bit of broth and cream that we're going to be adding to it, salt and pepper to taste. And we're just going to cook everything down uh, until it starts to sweat out, till we get a little color on it, a little caramelization. We're going to throw it all into our blender uh, and just turn it into a mess. And that'll be uh, the base for our soup, which we'll add our cream and our broth to bring it up to a simmer, and then we can get started on all the other stuff that kind of goes with it, because right. this is an assembled soup. Excellent. So, so we're gonna cut that onion. Yep. And and again, same thing here, you're just kind of chopping it down because the blender will do the work. Yep. So we just mulch that up. Uh, if you would like to make it a little bit more even in size, uh, it, will, uh, it will cook a little bit differently. Uh, this way, you're going to get some bits that are cooked, uh, like the onion, for example, is going to have some really, really sweet, dark bits, and some of them are going to be a little more fiery, a little more raw, because uh, everything is going to cook at a slightly different pace. Uh, but that's sort of the way that, that I like to do it on this particular dish, and there's a, a number of other ways that if you want to, like if you don't like garlic to be that real raw kind of flavor, uh, just make sure that it's all cut about the same <laughs> size and that it's all uh, cut relatively small and so on and so forth. It's uh, a, lot of, a lot of room right now for, uh, for this kind of stuff. And that's what I'm loving about this soup is you have all this color right here. Um, you know, the greens, the purples, the, uh, the reds. This is uh, already starting to look fantastic. We haven't even really done any of the oh, yeah. stuff up. <laughs> Well, uh, it will ultimately become a single sort of uh, nice red tone mm -hmm. uh, at the end <laughs> after, of course, the, uh, the technology is engaged. Um, go ahead and get these bad boys out. And so with that, we just, uh, you just squeeze the uh, garlic and... Yeah, I'm just going to peel it and smash it. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, to this day, one of the least favorite things in the world, as far as I'm concerned. I had a job as a bartender in Poland where uh, every year we had to put together a buffet for a New Year's party. And rather than hiring anyone to do it, they just, they realized that it was cheaper to pay the bartenders overtime and have us work a 20 hour day. So one of my jobs, was because the owner had to have, she was a health nut, she had to have raw garlic in a bowl peeled on the buffet. So if you've never done this for 120 <laughs> some odd tickets, <laughs> I do not recommend it. It was nuts. That was such an amazing fun bar to work at the, I can every other the day. experiences there. It was, uh, yeah, it definitely uh, you learn to uh, you learn to adapt and overcome when you don't speak the language as well as you should, <laughs> and uh, neither do they any longer because you've been they've been with you for a couple of hours. So just got that out of there, and again, these really all we have to do to prep them for the soup is this. And there we have it. That's going to be the vegetable base for our roasted red pepper soup. Okay. Now we've got some hot oil here. And we've added cold oil to it uh, for the magic of, of cinema. And we can just kind of start bashing all this stuff in here. So do you want to kind of let those cook down first before you put the other ingredients or? It's sort of a size thing more than anything else. It's just as the water comes out of the vegetables, they get smaller. Mm. 
and uh, I'm not as interested in these not having char on them as I am some of the other things, so mm -hmm. it's pretty much just that. Um, not really trying to be fussy about it in a real way. I try to save fussy for work. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We, uh, we have a kind of a, a philosophy about our food that we have uh, that's very similar to our philosophy about our, our coffee, which is that uh, it's for everyone. And it's also something to, just to sit down and do. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I really don't like about the coffee business right now is the, uh, the penchant for uh, to-go. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with some of the uh, traditional Italian drinks. Uh, our, we have a, a very traditional cappuccino. It is a six ounce cappuccino and it is made in the exact same way that it was made in Italy when it was named for the Capuchin monks uh, in the cafes. And it's six ounces of liquid. If you need that to go, <laughs> you should talk to your employer. <laughs> like, uh, the, uh, you know, or my favorite is when people come in and, and say, uh, can I get an espresso to go? Like, just give them the regular cup. <laughs> You'll be done before you get to the door. Yeah. Just leave it, <laughs> just leave it there. And so, uh, we don't like to be terribly fussy about things. We, uh, we like to have a situation where we're, we're comfortable. Mm -hmm. You sit down, you have a little bit of this, you have a little bit of that, and, uh, and it feels like the village bistro. It feels like, you know, like the village cafe. Uh, now, not to say that we are incapable of doing incredibly highfalutin and fussy things, or that anything's not going to look good when we're done, but, you know, it's... There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a mix, there's yeah, a fine there's, line. There's no reason to... There's no reason to make it harder than it has to be. If you have the time, come and enjoy it. And yeah. If, uh, if you do have to be at work in five minutes. We do have a full line of to-go to stuff. Yeah. If, uh, <laughs> if you do need to go somewhere else. Or if you're just really into picnics. Yeah. <laughs> and your parsley, you've already pulled the leaves off the stem. Yeah. And I'm so just, with that, you're just going to get minted a little bit. Yeah, basically I'm just gonna just beat it up with the knife a little bit, but I'm gonna put it in at the very end because it's the only thing that I really am kind of worried about getting uh, wilted, burned. Gotcha. Burn up, because it's so much more delicate than everything else in here. I mean, these are these are garden vegetables and aromatics. You, there's not really a whole lot you can do to mess these up. <laughs> And so while that's going, go ahead and hit these up right quick. And then so once these are in there, all, all the parsley's been added to the vegetables. We're just gonna kind of let that cook down. Yeah, we're actually we're gonna let this kind of cook down and then add this and then go into the blend. Okay. All right, so the, the peppers and the vegetables have been cooking down for roughly five or six minutes. We're just kind of getting the excess liquid out of them. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna add the uh, parsley, and how long does that cook for once the parsley's in there? Uh, not long at all. The parsley just needs to kind of warm up and bloom out its flavor, and uh, then it'll be good to go. Uh, we uh, are actually gonna cook this a little bit uh, after, it's, uh, after it's been in the blender uh, with, the, uh, with the stock, so all of that. All these flavors are gonna come together and uh, it's gonna be real nice. We can just start throwing it into that blender That's now. Cool. We'll put it in the blender, we'll get it blended up and we're gonna put it back in the, uh, the pot here in just a second.
then I just don't want to get to a situation where we're... Do you want to stop? All right, so we, we just blended up all our, uh, our vegetables. Uh, added about eight ounces of chicken stock. Uh, and Chef Jason just made sure the consistency was good. It's not real chunky. We're gonna pour it back in the pot. Uh, we're gonna let it, uh, so what's the purpose now? Is it just kind of cooking down? Or are we gonna let it simmer? Or? We're gonna let it simmer for a while. We're gonna let the flavors come together and we're gonna use the rest of that stock to adjust the consistency. Excellent. Uh, blender sizes differ. And so uh, if, you, uh, if you aren't careful, you can, uh, you can cause it to shoot out the top uh, and uh, then you have your own personal sort of uh, little Lucy sketch going on, which uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, I like watching Lucy covered in flour. I'm not necessarily a fan of being her. So just kind of keep an eye on things. So while, while that's uh, simmering, we're gonna go ahead and start the, uh, Go ahead and get our beans started. All right, so we got the vegetables simmering, and what are we making now? We got the, everything set out. So now we're gonna make a black bean salsa, and we're actually gonna use this uh, for a, a couple of different things. But uh, for right now, uh, the uh, this is gonna be uh, one of our presentation pieces in our soup. Okay. It's gonna add a little bit of volume, a little bit of body, uh, and it's gonna uh, to give it kind of a, a nice look as well. So a little contrast, things like that. So a little hot oil there and uh, this is an incredibly easy thing to make as well. Um, pop that off of there, I don't like that. So we're just gonna, and I've got three cloves of garlic here and these I'm gonna be a little bit more uh, careful about how I cut them because I do want them to kind of come together in a, uh, a little bit better uh, fashion. We don't have the uh, blender to use on this one. No, no, sometimes you get stuck out in the cold. So we'll just kind of mince this up. So it cooks real nice. It's one of my favorite things in the kitchen is garlic. It's <laughs> just cutting it smells so good. So I've never actually seen a uh, salsa made on the stove. It's usually just cut up and tossed into a bowl. What's the... Uh... Salsa kind of means sauce. So uh, there's, uh, at least from what Marco has told me, you have uh, a number of different kinds of salsa and uh, they all have different methods of coming together. Mm -hmm. uh, this is served warm. It's, uh, it's made warm and Let's see how it's kind of get a little bit brown there. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to add my beans to it. Oh, I like the idea of it. It's kind of cool. You learn something new every day. And that was two cans of drained beans. And uh, that can be uh, up or down depending on what you need it for and how much of it you need. And I'm just going to let this kind of cook until the beans start to fall apart, which being canned beans is not a very long time. <laughs> Maybe a little bit bigger bay leaf than that. Now what does the bay, do, bay leaf do for the uh, salsa? I've seen it, a lot of gumbos and everything, but. It just, uh, it provides a, a nice vegetal flavor. Uh, the, uh, it's a, a real staple for Mexican cooking, is what I've been told. And uh, yeah, it, it provides a, a nice sort of just balancing flavor, a vegetal flavor. And uh, the issue with it is that you have to add it fairly early. You gotta cook it a lot mm. because it takes, quite a minute to, it takes quite a bit to get it to release its flavors. So 
adding it fairly early on in the process of bringing everything to a boil. And that's also why you see it in gumbo so often, things that simmer for hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours and hours and hours. It gives it a chance to, to let that flavor out. Gotcha. Whereas if you throw in one 10 minutes before service, then it's just going to be a leaf in Hasn't there. Hasn't done anything. You know, I, I do see the uh, irony here. It's constant coffee and tea. <laughs> and you just add the leaves to beans, so in essence, you're making <laughs> Bean tea. I am a little bit, a little bit. Uh, uh, we've uh, we've decided that we're uh, going to be doing some uh, some changing of gears with our drink uh, program over at the uh, the East Pensacola Heights shop and also downtown. We're going to be uh, doing a series of non coffee based uh, latte drinks. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, we'll have one that is a uh, of course we have our, our sweet green matcha, our green tea mm -hmm. latte. Uh, our house-made chai tea latte will be on there, uh, but we're also experimenting with uh, some other products. There's a, uh, a uh, purple sweet potato that uh, people have been using, mixing with milk and turning into a beverage, uh, and a number of other ones. I, I believe that we'll end up at the end with uh, seven different colors. Really? Six or seven different colors. So if people want to drop in and, and see about that in the next, uh, in the next few weeks. And uh, that'll start being available soon as the product comes in and we can get everything up to our standard. And then uh, the other thing is we want to try to get into tea blending, blending our own iced teas, uh, blending our own hot teas. Oh, that'd be nice. And so uh, one of the things I, I wanted to try to do almost immediately was to, oh, I love the flavor of bay. Let me see if I can get this into something as a base note for a tea. And uh, it did not work at <laughs> all. Uh, you have to boil and simmer bay down to get any flavor out of it so much that you've completely destroyed every other botanical <laughs> in, your, in your herbal tea by the time you've gotten any flavor out of the bay. And so that's, uh, that's always a, uh, a fun thing to, uh, to learn. Uh, and uh, so that's, uh, and that's how I ended up learning that you have to add bay at the beginning of everything. Uh, whereas before, I just kind of did what I was told, which mm -hmm. was uh, put it in now. Yeah. <laughs> just go ahead and get it in there, you know. So I have my my beans. They're coming together rather nicely. They're breaking down, and I'm gonna take I guess a half a cup of salsa and uh, pour that in there, and that's gonna finish out my sauce. Oh, cool. Uh, with this uh, red pepper flake, and. Uh, we'll be able to just put this off to simmer and we'll make our final sauce. Excellent. How much is in there? Okay. So generally you'd say about a half a cup. But about really, half a cup. Like most chefs uh, in your kitchen. <laughs> How much do you like? Do you like salsa? <laughs> Uh, we use it by the bottle. These are, these are one servings in my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, I have to admit that that's not been the case for me in the last few years. Uh, we make our own salsa at the shop. In fact, about 80% of the ingredients that I'm using up here I've purchased, mm -hmm. but we make most of our own. Like we don't buy mayonnaise for our sandwiches uh, because we like to be able to control all the different aspects. Mm -hmm. So and you, can, was, you can tell what food's cooked like that. Again, I'm just looking at consistency. Uh, and so that's a two cup bottle. So I'm going to go with uh, that's probably a little bit over half a cup of salsa. And that's what we end up with is this kind of and this as this cooks down and thickens up and the beans break down, uh, it'll get a little bit more of a thicker texture. Excellent. And so a thicker consistency. We'll add some red pepper to it and yep. toss it to the side, let it simmer. And then we'll have the uh, cream sauce, and very shortly we'll be making some soup. About a tablespoon. Okay. And if you like it spicy, then you put more, and if you don't like it spicy, then you put less. And <laughs> if you are my wife, you don't put it in at all, and you yell at me. That keeps you on your game. That's uh, It absolutely does. Uh, she, uh, she absolutely adores all kinds of just things that most people in this country don't really quite get at because she's from Europe. And then there's a lot of other things where it's like, you don't like that? I thought that was like a 
thing that everybody was into. <laughs> nope, clearly not. Next, so that's off to the side. We're gonna get all our ingredients for the cream sauce, and we'll be right back. All right, so our, our black bean sauce is uh, simmering. We have our vegetables for the soup already simmering. Now it's time for the cream sauce. Yep. So we so, have a cup of buttermilk. This is a very versatile sauce as well. You can use it with a lot of different things. And then we have sour cream, about a cup. And then we're just gonna season that up with uh, a little bit of aromatics, just a pinch. Now what is that there? That is uh, onion powder. Okay. Uh, I prefer to use garlic powder. However, uh, this time we're using onion powder. So I got about, uh, I guess a teaspoon of that. And then I'm gonna use uh, about a quarter teaspoon of the white pepper. And that's what I love about chefs is, you know, you, you get an eye for it. Yeah, but of course, in your own home, if you're making this recipe, you know, just like with anything else, you know, do with the, uh, if you like a lot of uh, white pepper, put more in it. About a half a teaspoon. So we got a half teaspoon of paprika. And then all we're going to do is just, we're just going to beat this up and until it starts to get creamy. What I really look for with the paprika is I want to see little bits of red mm -hmm. in the white. And then everything else I want to keep uh, as much as I can uh, from messing with that color. Uh, lime juice can be added to this to give it uh, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a pop. Uh, and uh, have a little bit of an acidity to it. Uh, but this one is just real simple. Uh, and uh, just kind of does what you need it to do. So that's now, quick. Yep. So now we have our bowl. We'll finish seasoning our soup with a little bit of dried thyme and oregano. And so that was about a tablespoon of each. Of each. Yeah. That's thyme and oregano, then mm -hmm. salt and pepper to taste. that together and All right, so the last ingredient for the uh, red pepper soup we have a cup of heavy cream that's gonna add a nice texture to it that's uh, it's amazing what a little bit of heavy cream will do to a to a dish oh yeah well yeah fat is flavor right so we'll just get that stirred into there it's also going to do some nice things for the color as well. Okay, so now we yeah. have time to plate, right? Yep. That looks good. I'm going to give you two of these, maybe three, because I want some depth for my beans to sit in. Yep. I'm go ahead and take this guy right here. I'm going to avoid the bay leaf because it doesn't necessarily look real nice. I'll take a nice dollop of that and go right into the middle until it piles high enough up that I can see it on the top. And then we can just you can set it down and we'll take our, our sauce and we'll just uh... now do you ever draw flowers in it like you do your uh, your coffees or is it <laughs> John uh, I'll tell you uh, if I could do that, I would not be here. <laughs> I'm saying, it's very cool. I love it. You know all the designs that y'all come up with. It's, it is very neat uh, to see. Our uh, 
Our baristas do that. There's a couple of reasons that they do, actually. Uh, little known fact, uh, you cannot do the art with the milk unless you have a perfectly tight microphone. So if you don't know how a steam wand works, if you don't know how to make the milk, if you don't know how to cook the milk absolutely correctly, you're not ever going to be able to get those designs. <laughs> and that's where that design uh, fad came from. It's kind of show that it was, was done to show properly. Off that, yeah, to show off that uh, there is no better that this foam could ever be. So well, here we have is. this. And we can add a little bit of fresh cilantro to the top if you want a, a pop of color. Uh, there's a uh, hundred different ways that this can be decorated. Uh, you can uh, have uh, a little bit of uh, lime slices on the side. If you've added lime to your dressing, there's a uh, there's hundred other ways to do it. But this is real simple. It's real easy. Uh, all this stuff cooks ahead. As you saw, this mm -hmm. is made in minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a, a really nice, wonderful, very warming soup. Absolutely. So this is a red pepper soup with black beans with black and beans. cream sauce. Yep. Uh, Jason, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, make sure you catch Jason's other episodes with Constant Coffee and Tea. Uh, it has two other ones. And we're going to be reusing that the uh, bean sauce that he made here. It's going to be in another dish. So make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, we'll see you next time on Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. This has been Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. 